What's the anti-globalization movement? They're not against globalization. This is an affiliation of many different NGOs, environmentalists, activist groups, sometimes farmers who are simply calling to subsidize their grain or their own you know, homegrown products so they can actually protect their own culture locally. These are often very diverse groups of people who are connected only by their antithesis to the Washington Consensus. They organize and they mobilize using the very tools of globalization, using mobile phones, internet. You know, the past 20 years of so-called globalization has created more than 40% of our globe living in poverty, one-sixth of our planet living in extreme poverty. Actually, it has not created prosperity. It's created greater gaps between the rich and the poor. This is what they're against. They're also against corporations overriding the environment and in turn destroying traditional indigenous lifestyles. And sometimes the quality of life is more important than the quantity of life. This is one of the things that brings them to the streets in protest. They're a democratic, global democratic movement, if we really want to think about it that way. Here they organize at the IMF, World Bank, G8 meetings, World Economic Forum, and often they stop these meetings from being able to function. I commend these protesters because they're being able to bring issues to the forefront that are global media, which is often, remember, the broadcasting waves are often owned by governments anyway. So global media is not willing to stand up and talk about these issues. But the protesters in the street are, and they have brought them to the forefront. They've brought them to the table. But how do we transform this movement into policy? We need to bring the issues that the protesters have brought to the table and transform it into institutions, transform it into government policy, and change government policy, and change corporate behavior. That can be done at the next stage. This is what the next movement has to be. One of the examples of power of a grassroots movement is the G8 transforming to the C20. At the uh, WTO negotiations in Cancun in 2003, the protest was so strong that the WTO meetings collapsed. I commend those protesters for collapsing the WTO meeting because suddenly the G8 monopoly on global financial, fiscal, and consumer policy broke down. And you had the emergence of the G20, beginning with Brazil, China, India, and of course many different countries from Latin America and Southeast Asia. They came together, they created a new voice. We need this new voice, we need the G20 to expand to the G40, and then we're beginning to have a democratic plan. You know, we talk about democracy. How can you have democracy when the WTO holds a meeting and it has 153 members? Only 20 are allowed in the room to have the meeting. This is not global democracy. It needs to change. It needs to change, and that change begins in the street, but it must be transformed into the institutions. If we cannot take the change off the street, bring it into the institutions, bring it into the corporations, then that change cannot be transformed into meaningful policy and better people's lives. We need both.